Brrr, baby, it's getting cold outside. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. Now, as the weather's change here in Southern California and the temperatures drop, I find myself looking for hotter and spicier food to warm me up. Now, what better way to warm up the soul than to have hot pot? Now, I came across this restaurant in Cerritos, California that serves some of the best and most authentic Taiwanese hot pot that you'll find around. And I just can't wait to try their food. Now, I brought a very special guest with me today. This man needs no introduction, and if you really don't know him, his name is Steve Cha, and he runs an amazing YouTube channel that you just have to check out. Steve, welcome to the channel. Say hello to our viewers. I'm so glad to be here, guys. You are in for a treat because we are gonna have some awesome Taiwanese-style hot pot. I love Asian food, you love Asian food too, right? I love it, I love it. Steve, last time that you were on my channel, you and I had Korean barbecue, and we got in touch with your Korean roots. But today, like you said, we're going to have Taiwanese hot pot, and we're gonna be in touch with your Taiwanese roots. How do you feel about that? I feel stoked about it. Awesome. I feel so complete now. <laughs> <laughs> That's perfect. As usual, guys, if you enjoy watching my content, show me some love, give me a like, give me a subscribe to help support the channel. You guys ready? Steve, you ready? Yeah. Let's yes. do it. I'm here inside Pot on Fire uh, with Steve and we are actually gonna have an opportunity to witness the making of some of the hot pot that we're gonna have. Well, we got a few different flavors, and by the way, this is Kevin. He's oh, Kevin, guy. say hello to our viewers. Hi, how are you All right, doing? Kevin is uh, Kevin is the owner, the big boss of Pot on Fire. Ooh, that's a special broth. Special broth? Yeah, so it looks like um, there's a few different broths. Or yeah. Different flavors of soup, but then oh. the central station. Yes. Now this is where the name came from, Pot on Fire, because this pot is literally on fire. What do you say? Yeah, it's pretty much on fire, and then if you get the spicy one, your tongue will be on fire. That's for sure. The Taiwanese spicy feet. And where's that fire? Where's that fire? Oh, there we go. And then you got some broth. Boy. So Kevin, tell us. How long is this uh, gonna be on the uh, the stove for? Uh, it takes about five to six minutes to uh, heat everything up. Five to six minutes? Yep. Boy, yeah, look at that. What's next here? Yeah, so every pot actually uh, comes with a lot of vegetable, tofu, yeah. uh, all different kind of ingredients. Uh, we'll try to stay on the healthier side. How special right here? How special. Boom. Uh, this is the uh, authentic uh, Taiwanese barbecue sauce with a fermented tofu. What would a hot pot be without the meats in there, right? That's right. Yeah, and uh, all of them looks like they really have their own individual personalities now. Oh, They, they kind of look the same when it was in its early stages, but yeah. afterwards you definitely see the difference between all three of them. Oh, yeah. All right, guys, you guys have been waiting long enough and with me to my right is Kevin and to my left is Rockstar Eater. We order a lot of food and the smell. Oh, amazing. Okay, so Kevin, we got a lot of things today. Tell us like, what are the, the three things that we got here? So we have the sukiyaki uh, pot right there. Yeah. It comes with uh, prime beef, uh, fish cake, yeah. udon tempura. Yeah. Uh, this is the house special. It comes with fermented tofu, about 20 ingredients in here. 20 uh, ingredients! And this is the uh, Taiwanese uh, spicy hot pot. Oh, I think we got a flavor for just about everyone. Okay, now before we actually dive in, Kevin, I actually want to learn a little bit about the history. I came to the States when I was uh, 11, 12 years old. Uh -huh. And uh, this is all the authentic hot pot flavor I got from Taiwan when I was a kid Oh my up. gosh, yes. So um, a after after I started owning restaurants, I figured, you know, why, why not bring something I like into the States? Yeah. Everyone can share my taste buds. So I went back to Taiwan and imported yeah. all the authentic sauces, soup base. All the ingredients that, yeah. from Taiwan. Yeah. Okay, oh, that soup, is like soup based flavors from mm. Taiwan. I brought Okay, so we're gonna try some really authentic flavors today. Taiwanese flavors. I'm probably gonna start off with this one right here. This is what? Yes. The house special. The house special. Okay. 
And the first thing I just want to show you is like, you guys can see the steam. This thing is piping, piping hot. And look at all that. Oh yeah, Rockstar Eater, just stare at that meat. You know you love this, right? Yeah. Okay, and the meat in here, is this lamb, is this beef, is this pork? That's pork. This is pork. This is pork. So it's like thinly sliced pork right here. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I'm just gonna go in and take my first bite. Here, go, here we go, guys. Mm. That looks yummy. It does. Um, it's hot too, right? <sighs> I can see that. <laughs> like a dragon. <laughs> like a dragon, yes. First of all, I taste that authentic Taiwanese sauce that you're using, that base. Mm -hmm. It's it seeped into the meat. Mm -hmm. And the pork is super tender. And now, especially now when the, when the weather is cold outside, this is perfect. I'm already starting to warm up, and that was just the first bite. And you got big pieces of these like tofu. From fer fermented tofu, yes. Fermented, okay. So I think, if I remember correctly, on your menu, you can actually have the choice of a regular tofu or right. a fermented tofu, right? Right. right. Guys, I depends, chose a fermented. Yeah, yeah. And it smells pungent. Okay. Let me try this out. Oh! Okay. First bite into this, and I can remember walking the streets of Taiwan. <laughs> Taiwanese night market. Right, exactly. Okay. That is really, really good. And then you have this thing right here, which is like what? This is a tempura? A tempura in Taiwan, we call it tempura, but okay. it's, it's more like a, a, a fish shrimp cake kind of oh. mixed together. Yeah. It's a soup tempura. Okay, take a look at this, guys. And then, like one of my favorites is this quail egg, and I feel like I feel like you did great by adding this quail egg. Yeah, quail egg, guys. Hmm. All right. So I'm gonna let this kind of cool off a little bit. Now I'm gonna shift over to Rockstar Eater. Hmm. Steve, tell me what you got today, man. Yeah, I got a pretty good old-fashioned sukiyaki. Hot pot, but it looks so good though because all the ingredients in here look so traditional. Right, but it's so exciting because it, you know it comes to you basically on fire, just like the restaurant's called. Hot on fire, baby. Hot on fire. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yes. One of the big key ingredients that I see in your dish is just the use of udon. Yes. Right. Udon. So udon is characteristic of, uh, of course, Japanese cuisine. Yeah. And then there's an egg in here. There's yeah. uh, let's see, tofu in here. There's yeah beef in here, uh, fish cake, broccoli, and then the imitation crab meat in here. Dude, it's like falling right. apart. <laughs> mm. Oh man. It feels so comforting to eat this. Because really? the noodles, you know like what udon noodles taste like, right? I do, I do. But the broth, that's the magic right there. Because the broth, it's like, it has a pleasant sweetness to it. Yeah. Like soy sauce sweetness, that makes this such a delightful, I guess, Japanese dish. Kevin, tell us what you are having in front of you. So this is uh, the Taiwanese spicy hot pot. Okay. Usually we call it the mala spicy. The mala spicy. So it give you a little numbness. Yeah, it comes with the uh, slice uh, beef. Okay, so beef in yours, pork in mine, and beef in yours. Beef, yeah. And all the beef we use is prime grade. I love how you use high quality ingredients. Yeah. So Because you can really taste it. One of my hobby is to watch people enjoy their food. That's why I'm a restaurant owner. Mm -hmm. yeah. I love that. I, I love that, Kevin. Right? <laughs> I, love, I love that, Kevin. Yeah, so um, this, this has about 17 ingredients in here. So while, while I'm dining out at other restaurants, yeah. I'm also so searching for other ingredients that will fit into the hot pot. Mm. Yeah. Always innovating. That's why Kevin is like the big boss here. Tell us like a couple things more about your dish, and I obviously would love to see right. your reaction trying your own creation. <laughs> all right, all right. Okay. Uh, so we use uh, Napa cabbage. So we got the corn. Oh, yes. All right. We got the meatball. I've never seen a frozen tofu. So I mean, see? so it really it's sucking super the, porous. the soups. Okay. It's sucking the soup. Oh, yeah. okay. So you gotta be careful eating this. Yes. Okay. Oh, oh. I can't stop eating this. <laughs> I love, I, I just love that. because it's thumbs like, up. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's obviously a thumbs up for Kevin. And if you guys love spicy, then this is a great way to kind of fulfill that spice, right? Right. And then you can also have the opportunity to adjust your spice level. Right, so we, we set the spicy level from mild, medium, uh -huh. spicy to yeah. dangerous. To dangerous. dangerous. I usually eat spicy, I can't handle medium. Yeah. So folks, if you like to try dangerous, oh. I guess. Oh. 
if hot pot is not enough for you guys, okay? Kevin's got an answer for you. He definitely has other items on the menu that you guys should check out. Popcorn chicken. Oh. <laughs> Look at that. Taiwanese popcorn chicken, right? Yes. Okay, so tell us a little bit about this Taiwanese popcorn chicken. Kevin. So this is one of the most popular traditional food you see in the Taiwanese restaurant. Okay. Uh, you probably see it in all the Chinese restaurants with yeah. all the popcorn chickens. Yeah. So it's it's deep fried with uh, uh, basil and uh, I love that. salt. Yeah. I love that. Salt and pepper. Be sure to get some of that basil leaf that's fried as well. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. flavor. Okay. Let's give this a try. That's oh. so flavorful. Great. Really? Yeah. This looks like a bao. Whoa! I've had baos before, and mostly they're like steam baos. Yeah. But what looks like a bao to me seems to be a little bit fried. Right. Okay. So we first we gotta steam the bao, mm -hmm. and then after that we take it and put uh, put in the fryer for a minute. Okay. So mm. it make it crispy on the outside. Yeah. And then I'll I'll put uh, some lettuce wrap. It's almost like a lettuce wrap. Uh huh. Uh, Gyodong beef in the middle. Gyodong beef. Mm. So oh. it's like a small bite appetizer before you get to the hot pot. And is this like is this mayo on the yeah, top? Mayo. Okay. Yeah. I have a special made of mayo. Yeah. Really? Can't really tell you the recipe, but <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. <laughs> Crunchy, crunchy. Mmm. Oh my god. You know, first thing I'm thinking, the bun is amazing. Mm hmm. Because it's crispy. Mm hmm. Yeah. And then, of course, the meat is juicy, tender, succulent. Mmm. And it's phenomenal. Yeah. I, this is almost like a fried donut. Mm hmm. It is a fried donut, yeah. It is, okay, it is a fried donut. And it is so tasty. Yeah. Fried donut with bao and. A lot of Asian features. Mm. And it's, I think there's only like what, two or three or four ingredients in here. Maybe yep. including sauce, right? Yeah. But everything just comes together so nicely. It's perfect. I would come here just to eat this. Yeah. yeah. I also found something very interesting. Essentially, it's like what, cold blocks of tofu? Yes. And this ingredient here, this is called what, century year old egg. Right. Okay. Right. This is also another popular dish where um, uh, Chinese people, when they are eating breakfast, they usually have this. Oh, it's a breakfast dish. Right. But I took it for a dinner meal dish because it's very refreshing. Mmm. It's so good. Immediately clears your taste buds. Right? It's so good. And then you can keep working on your. Heart. It's refreshing. Another thing that is kind of interesting that we found is some calamari. So if you go to an uh, Italian restaurant, usually the calamari is much smaller. Yeah. So this one is a little bit bigger. I want to be generous to my customers. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And the oh. batter I use is more more crunchy. Um, yeah, so. Okay, right. let's give this a try. Yeah. Mm. It's very soft, it's tender. Mm -hmm. And the batter outside is light. It's crispy, but it's light. Mm -hmm. And you can taste that slight saltiness, slight pepperiness to it. Is Not it overpowering. White, is it white pepper? White pepper, yes. It's mm -hmm. white pepper. Basically, it tastes very Asian. Like when you eat it, it's like, yeah, it tastes like something out of an Asian restaurant. <laughs> yeah. Kevin, <clears throat> tell us what we got here. So this is the uh, pork blood rice cake. Mm -hmm. Pork blood rice cake. Same thing when we fry it, we yeah. use our own special cake uh, batter. Yeah. And then we put a little seasoning of white pepper. Okay. And the spiciness on top of it. Make it great. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And it's finger food. Finger food, yeah. Right? Finger food. I like to watch mm. football, so I can't stop eating this <laughs> while watching football. It tastes just like a rice cake. That's you know, what like I was going to say. Mm hmm. Yeah. Mm hmm. But a little crunchy on the outside. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? And there's some uh, hot uh, pepper that's sprinkled on top, so right. it's just a little bit spicy, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just a good snack overall. I think one of the problems with some of the blood in other restaurants is that you can really taste the foul blood. You know how it's, it's just mm -hmm. kind of has an unpleasant taste to it, but this one, I would say if you can't taste it at all, you've got some pretty good quality food going on. Yeah, and in everything that we've had thus far, yeah. like, I think quality is key, Yeah, and quality is something that Kevin, I think, has been just focusing on. Yeah. And it shows. So this is the ribeye. Yeah. Uh, with broccoli, eggs, some carrots yeah. underneath the steak. Yeah. And then pasta. 
the, the first flavor I smell just sitting right here is like black pepper. Right. Black pepper and then you got some pasta, you got some veggies and I love how you just have this, you crack an egg right there and you just let the sizzling platter like cook this dish, right? Yes, that's the whole point. All right, guys, take a look at this, okay? We that's came in for a hot thing, pot, yeah. we're walking out with some steak. <laughs> Here we go. Uh-huh. Let's do it, Boom. Steve. Mmm. Mmm. It's just a good old fashioned solid steak. It's very fresh. And the pepper sauce on top of it is something. That's rock solid. Yeah, so That's rock almost, solid. It's almost like an onion soup. It's a black pepper yeah. with sliced, thin sliced onions. And then you kind of cook it for three to four hours. So it's oh. it's been, yeah, it takes, it's a process. Right. Okay. And then next to it, you got some pasta. The way we're eating in Taiwan, we actually add some ketchup. Ooh. Ketchup. The ketchup and yeah. the black pepper, it's a great combination. It creates a chemistry. Like, I can't explain it. You yeah. have to try it. Okay. <laughs> yeah. All right, here we go. So it's a little pepper, a little sweet. That's so good. A little you know, sour with the ketchup. You know what it tastes yeah. like now? It tastes almost like eating a version of spaghetti, kind of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. But I think it's even better. Man, well, today's meal, today's like, Food episode, I mean, I have been blown away. You are very consistent from one dish to another, from hot pot to appetizer. I think you're just consistent, okay? And that's very, very hard to execute. The first pot on fire is actually establishing Chino. Mm. In Chino, okay. Right next to Chino Hills. Okay. Um, it's been around since 2016. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's always packed. Yeah. This is actually our second location. Oh. Second location. That just opened. I see a sign that says, Licensee partners. Tell me a little bit about that. So um, I'm looking to bring this flavor yeah. all across America. So you're saying there's yeah. a chance some of my friends that are not in California can actually try what I'm eating today. Oh yes, so we already have a, a licensed partner that signed up for four stores in Arizona. Oh and wow. We have, uh, and we've just been doing this for the past month. I think this is a place that you don't want to miss. I think you know, I drove all the way from Los Angeles to Cerritos just to try Kevin's place. And that trip, guys, you know, LA traffic, that trip is brutal, but it's so worthwhile. Yeah. It's so worthwhile because the food is just that good. Uh, before we close out, any last words to our viewers, Kevin? Any last words to our viewers, Steve? Oh, I guess last words is it's the real deal. So if you want to get the authentic experience, come on down here and get your Taiwan groove on. Oh, yes. <laughs> All right, guys, as usual, if you enjoy watching this video and want to be part of the Light Squad, be sure to smash that like button, give me a subscribe, and ring that little bit of bell so you always get notified when I put up epic food videos like this. That's going to be a wrap on today's video. I will see you at the next meal. <laughs>